take your Bibles, please, and open them to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, and today we're going to come to an end of our study on the Sermon on the Mount after many, many weeks of being in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. We come today to the end of the greatest sermon ever preached. This is our Lord's application of all that He has said. Every good sermon has to have an application. Here is our Lord's to the Sermon on the Mount. Would you stand please? We read now in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them. You might want to just circle that little phrase, and doeth them. I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and the heat beat uh, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Father in heaven, use now the message for your glory. The souls of men and women, boys and girls, hang in the balance in this hour. And Father, we pray that there would be nothing that would disturb or interrupt or hinder the work of your spirit in our presence today. Father, we pray if there are those here who are without Christ, that today as they hear the word and the Spirit of God convicts them of sin and righteousness and judgment to come, that they might believe on the Lord Jesus today. And Father, we pray for your people. Give us ears with which to hear this message. Help us to be wise builders and to build our lives upon the truths of your word. We pray, Father, that we will not just be merely professors, but that we will genuinely possess a living, vital relationship with you. May you receive all of the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. A kindergarten teacher gave uh, her class a show-and-tell assignment. and She said to the students that she wanted all of them to bring an object to share with the class that represented their religion. The first student stood up and he said, My name is David and I am Jewish and this is a star of David. A little girl got up and said, My name is Mary and I'm a Catholic and this is a rosary. A little boy got up and he said, My name is Billy and I am a Baptist and this is a casserole. (laughs) Object lessons can be powerful And object lessons can convey powerful truth. Our Lord gives to us today an object lesson. It's an object lesson that you will not miss. I'm saying to you today that you will not miss the point Jesus is making. I'm saying to you today that if you're half asleep, you will not miss the point Jesus is making. Jesus continues his series of contrast and and up uh, in the seventh chapter he has used a series of contrasts to drive home wonderful truths to us. For example, Jesus has talked about two, uh, two ways. There is a broad way that leads to destruction. There is a narrow way that leads to life eternal. Jesus said there are two trees. There is a tree that produces good fruit and then there is a tree that produces evil fruit. And Jesus said there are two professions. There are those who say, Lord, Lord, haven't we cast out demons and haven't we uh, done many mighty wonderful works in your name? And the Lord will say to them in that day, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. But there is another profession that says, Jesus Christ is Lord. And they do what he says to do. Then there's another uh, contrast. And it is a contrast between builders. Jesus talks in our text today about two builders. And he brings to our mind, again, what I believe is the theme of the book. If you look at the structure, the, the linguistic structure of the book of, uh, of the Sermon on the Mount, you have to conclude, I think, 
that Matthew 5.20 is the pivotal point that everything leads up to Matthew 5.20. Everything follows Matthew 5.20. It, it all revolves around Matthew 5.20 where Jesus said, but I say to you, except your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. So with that in mind, let us look at this application that our Lord gives to us today. What is it that he wants us to do with the Sermon on the Mount? You are obligated before God today to do something with the Sermon on the Mount. You say, well, I, you know, I'm not prepared to make a decision. Tough. You're going to make it. Well, you know, I, I just don't know. I don't know. I didn't come to prepared to make a decision. Tough. You're going to make one. Today you are brought face to face with our Lord who says, this is my sermon. What will you do with this sermon? How are you going to respond? Jesus helps us to understand how to apply the Sermon on the Mount, first of all, by calling attention to two houses. Jesus talked about two kinds of houses in our text. And the point of, of the two houses is not that... Uh, uh, one of them used mortar and brick and the other one used wood and nails. That's not the point. The point is not that one is the size of a mansion and the other is the size of a cracker box. That's not the point. The point of the two houses is not that one has a yard that is well landscaped and the other one has a car with blocks in the front yard. That's not the point. Let me show you what the point is that we would not know the point had Jesus not told us what it is. Because the point of the two houses is something that a casual observer would never see. Jesus is talking about the importance of the right foundation. You can skimp on the foundation and save money but it'll cost you in the, in the long run. You know, I, I've never in all my life, I've never heard anybody say of a house, it's the prettiest foundation I've ever seen. <laughs> that, is, that is the most, that, that, that is the prettiest, the nicest foundation of any house I've ever seen. Oh, we talk, about, uh, we talk about the Cornish work. We talk about the woodwork. We talk about the design. We talk about the color coordination and all, everything that goes along with all of that sissy stuff. But I'm telling you, nobody ever says, nobody ever says the foundation is wonderful. But I'm telling you, without the foundation, the pretty woodwork won't last long. Without a proper foundation, the paint is going to start to peel and the walls are going to separate it and you're not going to have a nice house very long. You better spend some time on what nobody else can see and that is the foundation of the house. Jesus talks about the foundation and notice what he says about it in verse 24. He says, there's a man that builds his house upon a rock. And the word that Jesus used for rock here, it's very similar to what he uh, 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 used in Peter uh, in Matthew 16 when he said, Thou art uh, the Christ, uh, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my uh, church. This rock here is a rock ledge. It is not just a single rock, a small rock, but it is a rock ledge. And in that limestone country, it would not be uncommon for a house to be built on a limestone rock. It was huge. It was massive. And here Jesus says a man is building a house and he makes sure that he builds on a rock. Here's the reason why. Look at verse 25. Because the rains are going to come. The, the floods will come. The winds will blow. And he says if you build on the right foundation, you can survive it. Can I tell you the reason some Christians survive the storms of life and some don't? It's not that Jesus loves the survivors more than he loves the failures. It's not that Jesus gives more grace to those who survive versus those who don't survive the storms of life. In fact, the survival really has nothing at all to do with Jesus at all. It has everything to do with us. You see, right now all of us are building our lives on a foundation. You choose. You are choosing. You have chosen. You will continue to choose 
what kind of foundation you will build your life on. And when the storms come, and oh, they will come. You say, but I'm in church every Sunday. The storms will come. Oh, I just come on Easter and, and the Sunday after Easter. The storms will come. I'm telling you that whether you're faithful or you're unfaithful, the storms of life come. They are coming to all being everywhere. Here's the point. You choose the kind of foundation you are building your life on. Jesus is speaking to us about someone who is in the process of building his life, her life, on a strong foundation. You see, he's talking about those who are real, those who are genuine, not the hypocrites. Not the hypocrites who say, Lord, Lord. Oh, you know, the hypocrites say, Lord, Lord, and their foundation looks pretty good on the outside, but when the storms come, it reveals that, you know what, it was shoddy work. There's nothing to it. Because the storms come and, and because they made a false profession and because they really don't know Jesus, when the storms came, their, their life crushed and, and fell apart. And, and he says, if you want to survive the storms of life, if you want to thrive in the midst of the storms of life, you've got to build on the right foundation. I'm telling you, you cannot build the right foundation apart from the Word of God. I do not understand how you can be a Christian and say, well, you know, I'm just not really into the Bible. Well, let me tell you what, you, what else you won't be into. You won't be into surviving the storms of life. When a storm comes, when tragedy moves into your life, when suffering wiggles its slimy way into your life, you'll fall apart and wring your hands in fear, in worry. What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? Because you've got the wrong foundation. There's nothing there that will sustain you. The winds are going to come. And he says, build on the right foundation. Build on a solid foundation. That, that solid foundation is the Lord Jesus and his sayings. Now, now notice what, what he says. Building on the right foundation is a Christian who is building his life on the Word of God. 1 John chapter 2 verse 14 says, I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong and the Word of God abides in you. You better put the Word of God in your heart and in your mind every day or you will not survive the storms of life. Building the right foundation is abiding in in the Word of God. Why do I need the Word of God? Why do you need the Word of God? Because the Word of God tells us the principles that please and honor God. I don't know right from wrong except the Word of God tells me. I don't know what pleases him and what displeases him except the word of God tells me. But now there's the second house. Here's a guy that is building a house. He's, it's going to take some extra sweat. It's going to take some more money. It's going to take a little more time. But he's, he's investing time, sweat, and money. And he's building his life on the solid foundation, the principles of the Lord Jesus. But there's a guy that says, ha, <laughs> I ain't got time for all that. Yeah, it's a bunch of foolishness. You know what? People will tell you anything. I, foundation doesn't matter. I was made to build a good foundation when I was a kid, and I'm sick of it. And as an adult, I'm not going to build a good foundation. My mom and daddy had a good foundation. That ought to be good enough for me. And we go through a litany of reasons why we're not going to invest the time and the energy and the effort to build a strong foundation for our lives. And, and so we build on sandy soil and, and, and we put it up as quickly as we can. Look what he said. He says they build upon the sand. It is a poor foundation. You know what? A sand, uh, the sand might be good to, to build sand castles in. But when the waves come in, it destroys the sand castle. Sand's a beautiful thing. But it's a poor foundation to build anything, on which to build anything. Jesus said, the house that is built on the sand will not last. 
I love what the, the old uh, Baptist said, John Gill, of several generations ago. John Gill said, such builders and such a building cannot stand the violent rain of Satan's temptations, the floods of the world's persecutions, the stream and the rapid torrent of their own heart's lust, nor the blowing winds of heresy and false doctrine, and much less the storms of divine wrath and vengeance. They are a most dangerous condition. They cannot support themselves. They must fall, and great will be their fall. Their destruction is inevitable, and their ruin is irrecoverable. I want you to listen to me. I'm speaking to some today, perhaps, and you're headed for disaster. The storms are coming. They're on their way. You going to survive them? See, this is not about the contacts you've got in your phone. This is not about who you know and who you don't know. This is not about how much money you have, how, how high your IQ is. This is about foundation. Have you built your foundation on rock or have you built it on sand? I'm telling you, if the storms were to come on this church all at one time today, how many would be left standing? How many would be able to come back tonight? How many would have to say, I lost it all. Everything that I held dear is gone. Everything that I thought was important is forever gone. I've wasted my life building on sand. How old are you? 50. I'm not talking to the women now. 50. 60. 70. You think it is that maybe you've spent 70 years building on sand only to lose it Oh, what a tragedy. What a tragedy to live. And, and, and when the storms come, you lose it all. In the blink of an eye, in the snap of a finger, it is all gone because you built on the wrong foundation. Ruin, loss, destruction. What a waste, what a shame. What a shame to build on any other foundation other than the solid rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there are two kinds of homes. There are two kinds of hearers. Notice what Jesus said about the hearers. In verse 24, he said, whoever hears these sayings of mine. In verse 26, we read, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine. These are two kinds of hearers. Twice Jesus said, these sayings of mine. What sayings is Jesus referring to? What is Jesus talking about when he says, if you build on the sayings of mine? What sayings? Some would say, well, it is all of the teachings of Christ. It is all that, that Jesus said. And, and I understand there's an argument to be made for all of that, but, but I, I don't think that's what is intended here. I think he's talking specifically about the Sermon on the Mount. What I've just shared with you, what I've just preached to you, he's saying, if you, if you build on the principles of the Sermon on the Mount, you will survive the storms of life. If you ignore them, when the storms of life come, you have built on the sand and you will not survive. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Jesus said, if you build on these sayings of mine, we're going to talk about those things. <laughs> Not all of them. But I want enough of them to give you a, an overview of the Sermon on the Mount. What are these sayings of mine that Jesus is talking about? Well, you notice that the Sermon on the Mount started with the Beatitudes. And Jesus said, blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. You see, if you are building on a solid rock, then the passion of your heart, the desire of your heart, the hunger of your heart is for righteousness. It is to live like Jesus. It is to, it is to have his righteousness in your life. That is to build on the solid rock. Secondly, in Matthew 5, 16, Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If you are building your life on the solid rock, then your light will be shining so that others may see the beauty and the glory of the Lord Jesus in your life. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 24, if you have ought against your brother, leave your gift and go to him. You see, if you're building on the solid rock, forgiveness will be in your heart and in your life. 
oh, I'd like to stop here and preach just a little bit. I won't. But let me ask you a question. You got any, are you harboring any unforgiveness in your heart today? You see, you're, you're, you're building on sand when you refuse to forgive. You're building on sand when you refuse to let your light shine. You're building on sand when you refuse to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 37, but let your communication be yea, yea, and nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. See, when you tell the truth, you're building on the solid foundation. Matthew 5, Jesus said, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you. You see, when you do what the world says you shouldn't do, love your enemies, you're building your life on a solid rock, a solid foundation. When you are, when you are pursuing a radical kind of righteousness, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, Jesus said, And after this manner, therefore, pray you, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When you go into your closet and you spend hours of uninterrupted time a week with God in prayer, you are building your life on a solid rock. Matthew 6, 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust and corruption does not, uh, and thieves break through and steal. When you lay up treasures in heaven, you're building on a solid rock. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or wear. When you refuse to worry, you are building on the solid rock. Matthew 7, 1, judge not that you be not judged. When you refuse to engage in the Christian, um, uh, what, what many Christians think is normal. When you refuse to engage in judging other people, you are building your life on a solid rock. By the way, the converse is true. When you, when you judge people, you are building on sand. Look what he said in verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. The problem is not that they didn't hear. The problem is not that they didn't discern, they didn't understand. The problem is they heard, but they refused. To do what God said. I think we have church members like that sometimes, don't you? I know what the Bible says, but. I know what God says, but. There's a third and final thing I want you to see. That is, Jesus mentions two kinds of hearts. Notice in verse 24, he mentions a wise heart that is prudent, it is sensible. This is the man that hears and obeys And I'm telling you this morning that in order to build your life on a solid foundation, you have to have wisdom. And wisdom is you hear what God says and you do what God says. That is wisdom. Let me ask you a question. Hell is hot. Hell is real. Hell is for all eternity. Hell is an unquenching flame, an undying fire. The Bible says that the flame is not quenched. There's weeping and gnashing of teeth in hell. But in heaven there's the presence of Jesus. In heaven there's peace, calmness in the presence of Jesus. Which makes more sense? To believe on Jesus and receive His forgiveness and His life or to reject Jesus and to choose hell over Jesus and over heaven. What is the sensible thing to do? Folks, I want to tell you, I know the Spirit of God uh, plays a role in our salvation, but I'm telling you, it just makes plain sense to be saved. That is sanity. Insanity is to refuse Christ. Insanity is to choose Satan and hell over Jesus and heaven. It's insane. It is insane that anybody would say, yeah, you know what, I want to go to hell. That's insanity. And I want to tell you it is insane to refuse to build your life on the sayings of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. But now look what he says in verse 26. Jesus spoke of a foolish man. That is a moronic man. A moron gives us our word moron there. It is someone who acts foolishly. 
Anyone who refuses to build their life on the sayings of Jesus, the Bible says that is unthinking. That is moronic. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. I'm telling you to build your life on the sayings of Jesus makes sense. Now you would say, but I, I, I can't. No, I'm going to tell you the problem is that we can't. The problem is we won't. Can we, be, can we be honest with ourselves and honest with God? The problem is not that we can't. The problem is we won't. You say, but I struggle. I know. I do too. But I'm going to tell you what the key is. The key is not the power of the flesh. The key is the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit of God. With the indwelling empowerment of God's Spirit, we can build on a solid foundation. I'm asking you right now, if, if obeying the commands of Jesus means you're building on a solid foundation, if hearing the commandments of Jesus but not obeying them means you're building on the sand, what would you say you're building on? Solid foundation or sand? The storms came to Job. The storms didn't come to Job because he had done anything wrong. They just came. Life happens, doesn't it? And sometimes life hurts. And sometimes life uh, brings the most adverse, severe storms imaginable. What happens when the storms come? Doesn't depend on your friends. Doesn't depend on who they are, how many you got. Doesn't depend on the size of the church. Doesn't depend on how good the preacher is. Doesn't depend on how well the choir sings. What will matter is this Have you built your life on the right foundation? The sayings of Jesus. I want us to stand together this morning. In just a moment, we're going to have an invitation. I want you to determine right now in your own heart. I want you to ask, answer the question. Are you building on the right foundation this morning? Are you building on the sayings of Jesus? Are you living for self? Selfish pursuit, selfish ambition, selfish gratification. Are you living to obey Jesus? See, that's building on the right foundation. You know where all this begins though? Building on the right foundation begins with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you don't know Him as your Savior, then you're building definitely on the sand. You first have to come to Christ, believe on Him, and be saved. This morning, if you've never trusted Christ, we invite you to come to Him. The Bible says that if we'll believe on the Lord Jesus, we'll be saved. Would you come to Jesus this morning with the faith of a child, humbly trusting, believing, receiving God's gift? He'll save you, forgive you, and make you eternally His child. Friend, that's the most sensible thing you could ever do. Come to Him now. Whatever God's Spirit may lead you to do, that's how we want you to respond. Father in heaven, we ask you now to bless the message and use it for your glory. We pray if there are those here without Christ that they would come believing on Him even now. And Lord, be with Your people. Help us, Lord, one and all to be building on the right foundation. In Jesus' name, amen.